Excuse me, are you here to help me find my grandpa? Huh? Who are you? By the sounds of it, a resident of this village. My name is Isak. You'll help me find my grandpa, right? Is your grandpa a mad scholar? Hey, don't say that. Grandpa is just grandpa. Why do you have to call him that? It's not like he's a bad person or anything. <sighs> the person you're referring to is not a local. That you are. Why do you call him grandpa? Grandpa is just grandpa. He's my family. I, I heard everything you said to the village chief. Please, you gotta take me with you. I, I wanna find my grandpa. I, I swear I'll help. I won't be a nuisance. Ah, so you're the one who was eavesdropping on us around the village chief's house. I was planning to go out and take care of whoever it was. But I had a vague feeling that they didn't harbor any ill intent. Whoa. Oh, Ethan wasn't kidding about Matra having sharp senses. I know. He's just a kid. All he wants is to find his grandpa. Let's find a way to help him. Sorry. I was only listening in because I wanted to know where Grandpa went. Honest. If you don't believe me, you can ask Miss Candace. All right. But first, let's confirm the facts with Candace. back already we just wanted to confirm something with you do you know a boy by the name of Isak? <laughs> i had a feeling he'd go looking for you huh you knew this would happen yes although he tried his best to stay hidden i still noticed him eavesdropping outside the window he really wants to get his grandfather back Isak's parents were both Aramite mercenaries who rarely returned to the village after finding employment in the city. He was raised by his grandfather. Unfortunately, it was only a few years before his grandpa passed away. Isak was still very young at the time, so various families in the village took turns caring for him so he could survive. Later, an elderly mad scholar arrived at the village. Isak thought the scholar bore a striking resemblance to his grandfather, and thus often spied on the man. However, the scholar was unkempt in appearance and incoherent in speech. Although Isak referred to the man as his grandpa, he was afraid and didn't dare to approach him. One summer night, the oft mumbling and bumbling grandpa suddenly calmed down and seemed to become more lucid. He even noticed Isak hiding in the distance. So Grandpa walked up to Isak and patted him on the head. He even took Isak to the entrance of the village, where he patiently taught the boy the names of the stars and accompanied Isak until he fell asleep. The next morning, Isak woke up and wanted to go find his Grandpa again, only to realize his Grandpa no longer recognized him. However, even so, Grandpa retained his calm expression. It's said that those who saw the scholar claimed he no longer appeared to be crazy, but appeared to be living in his own world, almost as if he was sleepwalking. Isak was thrilled that his Grandpa was able to find peace and would follow him all the time, asking him things like, Grandpa, won't need to take you somewhere fun, or Grandpa, could you tell me stories about the stars again? All this somehow just makes Paimon feel really sad. It seems like they both deserve so much better. Perhaps. Nearly everyone who lives in the desert has some form of hardship or regret. But even so, we must still continue on with our lives. It's also my reason for fighting. 
I must continue to protect this land. Maybe the people have always had a considerate god watching over them. Huh? What did you say, Dino? No, nothing. As long as Esau keeps his word and doesn't get in our way, we can take him along. Perhaps you are more compassionate than I gave you credit for. Please accept my thanks on Esau's behalf, Sino. Oh, it's you guys! We've cleared everything up! Let's go find your grandpa! Really? Wow! Thank you so much! Yeah! Alright. Let's ask the local residents some questions first. <laughs> 